everyone, it's Farm Sim Guy here. Hope you're all doing well. I am hyped for this one. It is back. Straw Harvest back for FS22, and it's as good as I remember. I absolutely love this in FS19. So super excited to show you what it's all about. We've got everything installed, everything bought, um, and we will go through it bit by bit and take you through what's happening with it. So first and foremost, let's jump in. Let's have a quick look at everything you get in the pack. So there we go. Straw harvest pack. This is all the equipment you get. So you've got the vertical bale grab um, starting at 4,500. Then you have the three bale grab the square bales that's uh, 6430 now these do work on things like telehandlers uh, front loaders and wheel loaders different connections for those um, and then you've got the five bale grab as well there at 14200 now this one only works with a wheel loader so you obviously need a, a quite a large piece of equipment to move five of those large bales uh, but bear in mind um, that the other two are good you can flip between front hander telehandler and wheel loader so you've got a few options there then we move on to the balers the comprima v180 xc at 81700 uh, let's jump into that obviously a round baler will do everything from a 125 diameter bale to a 180 diameter bale um it needs 80 horsepower to run so you can run it on a pretty small tractor it runs at 12 miles an hour 3.6 tons now you've got a few options here you've got wheel setup standard and standard two and refill supplies manually or automatically now it does throw on a 10,000 extra fee for that and you can see that the uh, bale wrap appears there I've left it on manual because you'll see uh, I want to show you that when we uh, play with the machines in a little while but that is the Comprima V180 XC then I saw one of these at Lama this week so uh Puts a big smile on my face seeing this. The big pack 1290 is back. 16.6 .6 tons. You need 258 horsepower to run this bad boy, but it will run at 15 miles an hour, which is brilliant. Uh, and you've got the option of 180 to 240 centimeter bales. 319,000 in price. Now, again, a couple of options here. Bale shoot if you just want to turf your bales out onto the field as per normal, or the bale collect 1230 if you want the bale collect which we'll look at in a second and again same option there refill supplies manually or automatic so there you go there is your big pack 1290 next up your bale collect 1230 um this runs behind that big uh, baler there the 1290 and grabs three bales and spits them out on the ground together we'll run that and let you see that one no um options with that one but just coming in shy of thirty thousand pounds, twenty nine five eighty. Next up, the Primos five thousand. This is a mobile palletizer. Pelletizer, should I say? Not palletizer. Um, this is uh, three hundred twenty thousand. It uh, will hold nine thousand liters of pellets. In the top there, 19.3 tonnes, 350 horsepower to run this bad boy, so you're going to need a chunky attractor to run this. Only runs at 6 miles an hour, uh, and it has just the one standard set of tyres, and again, the options are there to refill supplies manually or automatically. Uh, looking good, though. And in addition to this machine, you also have the bale shredder. Now, the bale shredder uh, will attach and make what is a mobile vehicle, static so you can bolt this onto the side uh, and leave this running in a field or in a shed this will chop the bales up for you drop them into the pelletizer and uh, produce them that way but obviously you can't drag it around the field with this attached so it'll stand static and you'll need a trailer to unload uh, the primos uh, in addition to that then you have got your supplies you've got the bale twine which you'll need for your square bales you have the bale net uh, which you'll need for the round bales and molasses which you will need for the pelletizer. So we're going to do all of those. I left it manual so you can see the process of loading those up. So we're going to do all of those uh, just now, get it going and start running some things out. But before that, I'll show you what else you get. In your build menu, you have got a couple of sheds. We'll scroll down to the end there. You can see them in front. I've got a couple of them built here. So you've got a standard shed here for 175,000. 
or you have the same shed but with a crane in it and we'll have a look at that in a second as well uh, but that's not all if you go into productions you have the same shed again the only difference with this one is that it has a palletizer in it uh, as well so you can take your pellets and you can bundle them all up bag them all up put them onto pallets to make them easier to sell uh, you also have um the pellet heat plant so again if you don't want to put them onto pallets you can sell them pellets and pallets i mean crikey this is really hard for me to get, <laughs> get my head around i'm going to say the wrong thing so many times but this is your heat plant so you can tip uh, straw pellets not hay pellets bear that in mind straw pellets and wood chips in to produce heat and you'll earn a bit of money out of that and you'll also generate a little bit of uh, power as well so uh, good to know that that's in the middle over there uh, and the final thing is the sell point which is just here so if you've um, palletized your pellets easy for me to say you can sell them at this point as well and it's worth doing let me show you this here we go in our prices menu there you go hay pellets or straw pellets um most expensive straw pellets 531 for a thousand liters hay pellets 755 um so bear that in mind if you go back to standard straw and hay prices 61 for a thousand liters or 93 for a thousand liters so definitely worth crushing up your bales and selling them for a higher price, I think. Even if it does take a little bit more effort. Right. Before we go, in fact, before we jump in the vehicles, let me just have a walk around these sheds. We'll come back in a little while and have a play with uh, that one over there. But I just wanted you to see. This is the shed. Uh, you've got the two options. You could have it with or without the crane. To use the crane, you jump in here. It's an E to enter the vehicle. There you go. You're inside the crane now. The light is flashing. You can change your camera. There's a few options. This one, this one, and back to the first one. So three camera options there. Uh, to move this about, it is left, right, and both mouse buttons together. So left mouse button and left and right will obviously move it to the left and right. And if you go forwards and backwards, it will uh, move it across the way, as you can see there on the runners. So forward and backwards and left and right like so now your right mouse button will rotate like so if you move it from the left and the right and if you move it forwards and backwards that will give you your up and down movement and finally if you hold both the mouse buttons together and move it forwards and backwards that will open and close it like so now i haven't experimented with it yet but i'm pretty sure you could probably hook that up to a joystick somehow uh, and make it a little bit easier for yourself. The old mouse way of doing it is it's okay, but uh, it sometimes can be a bit of a challenge. Um, so that is that shed, as you can see, nicely finished as well. There is your uh, pellet heat, uh, or your cell point. Uh, there you go, the pellet heat plant. So you tip into here, uh, and it generates your power that way. I think if I press this, you can go into the production chain, and it will show you um, what's in there as per usual. And just over here is our sell point for our um, bagged up pellets. So there's your straw ones and there are your hay ones. So let's just pop into the building here. One, because I've tipped um, a big load of each of those into here so you can see what the textures look like. So there's your straw one. You can see all those pellets in there. So obviously a little bit lighter and a little bit more green for your hay pellets and here is your palletizer and again you can use the crane here um there's different oh i didn't show you that actually before did i let me jump into the crane again you have different uh devices for the crane um so let me bring this over here so you can see it on the crane here you can change these by um pressing x and that will switch between a pallet grab uh, the scoop that we saw which is good for picking up the pellets uh, and this which is a bale grab and the reason for that is um, if you want your static uh, Primos pelletizer you can park it in here put the bale shredder attached to it and have an almost automated uh, solution that just needs to load bales so if we've got time and the video isn't too long I'll show you that otherwise we might come back and do that in a second video but there you go that is your buildings and this is fully automated so as soon as you drop 
anything in here, it starts to produce the pallets. You don't have to turn it on or anything. Look, you can see we did a little test in there already, and we've got almost a full pallet ready. Uh, and then they are spat out here for you to unload with a forklift truck. So, there's your buildings. Very cool. Uh, and again, quality of the finish on these uh, is tremendous. A wonderful job by the guys at Creative Mesh. There are your bale grabs in person as well. You can see those. Um, there's the five, the vertical, and the three hooked up to this class because we're going to go and pick some bales up in a little minute. We've got a trailer tucked around the corner there for when we show you how the Primosh works static. So I think that's probably the first thing we'll do, isn't it? Jump into this and get it loaded up. So when you jump into this, I'm going to roll forward. Right, now we're in the sunshine. I'm going to zoom in and you can see we need to unfold the pellet harvester to load things into it. Now, there you go. That's all you need to do. Um, it's the only real visual we've got on it. Um, and what we need to do, let's grab our molasses here. I do have a forklift. And we'll get that loaded in first and then we'll do the water. Right, here we go. Now one thing, as you can see, like I said, with all the tyre marks on the floor, we have been doing a bit of testing. But it is very good. The triggers for loading are pretty good here, so you just need to roll up there with the forklift, just somewhere near the back. We scroll back a little bit here, and I hit the R button to fill. You can see, there you go, the molasses filling up quite quickly. Um, and you can see them disappearing out of the pallet as well. Very nice. I don't think we need to put them all in, really, do we? We're probably good about there for the amount we're going to demo. So that's that done. Let's move them out of the way. And we'll grab the water. And here we go, little water trailer. Again, just need to be in the vicinity. You don't need to work too hard to get the trigger working here. So there we go. Just hit the R button. And you're filling with water as well. So there you go. Everything you need now, all the constituent parts in place to start up your pellet machine. So we'll roll over here, we'll power things up, and hopefully we'll start making some pellets. So, uh, B bun to power it up as you would with any baler, um, and then the V button to lower things down ready to go. And uh, off we go, it's as simple as that. You can see the straw starting to go in, be processed, and you can see your pellets appearing up top. So. It's being processed and filling up already. We're crikey, we're 15, 16 percent already. It's going to take not too long at all to fill this up, which is great. So we'll come back when we've got a full load. Right there we go, 98, 99, 100 percent. So we've got 9,000. Let me lift the uh, pickup up. There we go. We can power this down as well. There, 9,000 liters of pellets in there. We will run back to the farm now and just unload these and we'll probably throw them into the, um, the pellet heat production point and give that a go um, and then I think what we'll do is we'll set up this as a static thing and then we'll then we'll run some balers so if I park this I don't know somewhere like this that should be good and we'll uh, unload what's in here we could dump this on the floor if we wanted. We won't, though. We'll go and get a trailer. Right, here we go. We've got a little fent and a trailer here. Um, bear in mind, this uh, this pipe does not come out very far or is particularly high, so be mindful what kind of trailer you get uh, to unload. We well, might end up bashing into it, but let's get this unloaded, and we'll just run it over and sell it so you can see what happens if we do it that way. Of course you can if you want to as well, take it from here, if I can get out, and uh, tip it into the sheds, like we've done over there as well. So that's the other option. You've got you've got a nice variety of options of how you want to do this. Lots of choice, which is, which is I think, great. So there we go. 7,000 litres in, just a couple more to go. Um, and then we'll go and tip it over there. Like so. Excellent. Right. Let's pop this over here and uh, 
Then, once we've tipped these in, and you've seen this running in the production point, like I said, we'll attach that bale shredder, and we'll pop this trailer back under, and then we'll get it all ready to receive some bales. So, there we go. A little bit further back until we get our trigger. There we go. Straw pellets in. So we'll let that tip. We'll go and activate it. There we go, the auger's on. It's filling up. Not sure how much it takes before uh, it's full. Looks like it's taking the full 9,000 though, which is good. So we're going to here. Straw pellets are in. Let's activate that. At some point, we should get some money and some uh, some power out of that. Right, let's run this back to where we were because we're going to need it again. Right, let's pick up the bale shredder, if we can. Um, this was the only bit that I just struggled ever so slightly with getting right. Um, it took me a little while and a few goes to get it organised. Now, the tip here is, you see that yellow roller? That is the bit that you want to align to the pellet maker. And you want to go somewhere like around about, I would say here um, let's drop this down and get it out of there oh there we go right just jump in the fence here and look we've actually got it straight away which is great chrome bale shredder now if I move that out of the way you see it's the the trigger for this is quite small so just make sure you get it in a roughly this place use that wheel on the front um, of the pickup as your guide really if, you, if that wheels in the middle there and uh, that yellow roller is close enough you should have no problem so let's hit Q there it is attached but it's not unfolded yet so obviously now you can see in the top left corner there it is selected if it's not if you're on your tractor or you're on your baler it won't unfold but if you're here hit the X button and that now unfolds like so We'll let that unfold. The only problem is now, we don't have any bales, so we're going to have to go and get some bales. But that is set up and ready to go. If you powered up your baler now, like so, there you go, there's your blades running. Looking good. Now, we should probably park our little trailer under here as well, and we've got a static system ready to go. Right, let's show you the baler. So I'm going to start with the round baler. Um, we won't use the bales off this because you need the square bales to go into the bale shredder So we'll just do a little demo of this so you can see it in action now Like I said, I set these to manual load So what to do if you want to load them manually you press the N button and watch the the front just open there You see how that's worked? Then we just need to go and grab the forklift with the bale wrap and uh, load it up There we go rolling up to the baler like so get it in somewhere like I don't know something like that will do again it's pretty flexible to be honest I'll jump in here we just need to hit the R button as you would with your uh, molasses and your water and the other one and you can see we've lost I think it looks like three rolls there and they now appear inside if I can get in to have a look there you go all sorted in there and then when they run out you'll need to go and refill them again quite like that nice little bit of uh, immersion there we like that so let's get this out of the way and put these over here again and we'll just take this for a little bail right back in let's close that down might as well take this uh, swath here hadn't we so this is pretty standard now spin it up lower it down and off you go, bailing. And uh, we're unloading them pretty quick here. So there you go, there's the results. Uh, you can see the wrap on it there. Now of course, if it was a silage bale, you would use um, what's at the top there, rather than the wrap. Uh, but as this is straw, you just need the net wrap around it. Um, oh, see, close bale. There we go, because I opened that. Right, fired up again. 
and off we go. But lovely balers for s you could use this on smaller farms as well and get around quite easily with that. So there you go, there's your little round baler. Very cool. Right, here we go. Now, obviously, I think you're accustomed to the way that we load this up now. I will roll this forward and I'll attach um, the, uh, the bale sled at the back here. Let's get that hooked up, like so. So we've got the full setup going now. Again, as before, I'm going to press N, and it does this lovely animation here, and unfolds the sides, and then flips them out. Now, if I jump out, you'll be able to see these kind of shelves sitting here so we will get our bale twine same on both sides we'll get our bale twine we'll get those loaded up like I said I've just come back from Lama this week and we saw that in person the scale of these things is off the charts and it was very cool they had it all unfolded as per I've got it there so uh, yeah the fact that we've just been given it in game by the guys at Creative Mesh it's a lovely, nice little bonus. Right, let me get this loaded up with my terrible forklift skills and uh, get it over to the um, baler. So again, as before, let's just get it just about here somewhere, like so. Hopefully that's close enough. We'll jump in. We'll soon find out. We'll jump in and we'll hit R to fill. There we go filling nicely takes a little bit of time but you can see them going in which is great there you go four along the top now i think it might be filling oh there we go it was a bit slow there i think it might be filling the other side at the same time so i span around pan yes that's why you're not seeing it all the time because it's filling both sides which is handy I like that we'll keep going with that see if we can get a few more in there and uh, once that's done we'll take it for a spin right let's roll over pick a swath to get lined up against and uh, we'll get started in fact I'm just gonna whip around here so I can pick up the edge of it nice and easy you can see the sled kind of getting towed along behind very comfortably. Now, of course, on the turns, you probably don't want to be unloading a bale on the turns. We've got a nice big field here, so hopefully we won't have any issues with that. But we'll get into place, and as you would expect, normal baler powering up uh, process. So let's select the baler. Oh, there you go. We need to unfold it first. The bale collect needs to be unfolded first. So let's move to the end one. Here we go. Get it unfolded. It pulls it into the baler like so and then the wings will fold out like so okay that's in place now so then we can go back to our baler unfold our baler power it up lower the pickup down and we are off happy days now we've just got to fill it with a few bales so, first bale done. Nice. T not taking long at all. I mean, the fact we're flying along here at 15 miles an hour helps. But, uh, second bale coming. Obviously, we're starting from scratch here, so we'll probably need a fourth bale to push the first three out. Now, watch these as they, they'll move to the side. Look at that. Great animation. Love that. And there's our second bale. Of course, what did I say about turning on the headland with a full bale? We'll probably get to the headland. Exactly as we've got a full bale. Actually, I think we're going to be all right. There we go. And there we go. It dumps them on the floor. Like that. So we'll whip around here. Apologies to the farmer in the field. I'm just driving over there. I know I don't have access to it. Right, back up the way. Now, because I'm going 50 miles an hour, you can see they've offset ever so slightly. So if we slow down slightly here, when we've got a third bale, it might do a better job of not turfing it onto the floor in such a mess. So there's our final bale. Okay, so let me just slow down. There you go, that was a bit neater, wasn't it? 
and we're done. Right, we'll just keep going for a little bit more, get a few more bales out, and then we'll go and pick some up and try chucking them in into the uh, the pellet maker. Right, we've got a few bales in the field there. What we'll do, we'll jump in the wheel loader. We'll go gam. So here we go. We've got a few close to us here. That will do nicely. So what you do, let's just roll up. Hopefully we can just slide them together. The ones that kind of moved apart slightly. And it is, once you've got them where you want them, I might just roll forward a little bit further. There. That's it. That's nice. And roll it forward slightly. Um, and then it is Y to grab the bales. And there you go. Three bales. This should be fun for loading a, a trailer as well, actually. Um, so we can run these down to here. Like so. Let me just get them at an angle like this. And we'll drop them off. And it is Z to release, not Y. And then we're done. Now, I could go and get a few more and stack them a little bit high. I'm not going to bother, just for the purposes of the demo here. Now, um, in fact, here's what I'll do. I'll drop this off. I was going to get another vehicle, but what I'll do, I'll drop this off and I'll go and get the vertical bale spike because we could use that. It's got a couple of spikes on the bottom of it for loading. So let's do that. So let's just dump this here. So here we go. There's a couple of spikes on this. Um, so it should allow us to lift a single bale quite easily. Now, before I lift this up, what I'm going to do is turn everything back on in the pellet maker. So, first things first, jump in this, fire up the tractor, now hit the B button, sends everything going, that looks good. Now I'll leave that running and we'll drop a bale onto the track here. So, get this at an angle where we should be able to drop it off quite nicely. So, like so. You know my bail loading skills at the best of times, so this could be this could be fun. There we go. Drop it down. Pull away. Well, that worked pretty well, didn't it? I'm going to make sure it's going to go in there's actually uh, veins there that kind of nudge it into place, so it might snap into place as it goes through those green points there. Let's just see. Then again, it might be accurate enough that it won't bother. Okay, while that's still moving in, what I'll do is grab a second bale here. We can drop it in behind it. There we go. Let's lift that up. Let's make sure we get this as aligned as possible to avoid any issues. Roll forward. I've not done bad, actually. Quite impressed with that. Even if I do say so myself, it does feel relatively easy to do. There we go. Let's just move that out of the way, and I'm not going to do more than two just for the purposes of this vid. It looks like the first one's going to just... Roll into the shredder there. And we should start to see some pellets appearing soon. Let's jump in the tractor so we can get a better view. There we go. Straw being shredded. Up into the uh, up into the baler. And there's our pellets arriving. And they're loading them straight into the trailer. Look at that. How good is that? brilliant. This is, I have to say, for all the moving parts and all the different ways of doing this, this everything just seems to work straight away, which is great. It's been, you know, like the, the trigger points are working, the uh, unload points, everything detects everything, and everything just seems to work, which is fantastic. So there you go, first bail in, and we're looking good. So I'm just going to leave that to run now. That's... Um, that's doing its thing very nicely. 
Right, um, while that's running over there, as you can see, the dust's still pumping out from it, we are going to just show you how the palletizer works. So um, we'll use the crane to start with, but again, what we might do, maybe with our third bale, we might run this and set it all up in here. So you could show you, uh, so I can show you how it could automate in here as well. But first and foremost, let's jump in and use the crane. Right, there we go. I think this camera angle is my preferred one, and we'll change the tool to the bucket, like so. Let's move along to here. Let's move along to here. Now we'll grab some sh um, hay pellets here, because that's what we did when I was practicing before I started the vid. Uh, lower things down, so that was left mouse button and forwards and backwards and left and right to move it about. Now right mouse button to lower. And then both mouse buttons together and push forward and backwards to grab your uh, pellets. Right mouse button again to bring it back up. Um, that's right mouse button to rotate as well. Now we're going to go uh, not left and right, we're going to go up and down, up takes us over here with the mouse and now I can both mouse buttons again and empty slightly off center did I drop any on the floor no I got away with it but like you can see there look the conveyor belt just starts straight away and we'll run over here quickly before they run out but uh, there come the bagged pellets onto the conveyor belt and they're loaded up and they're moved into place here, sitting on a pallet. Now this pallet, hopefully, we've got enough here that we can uh, finish that pallet off. And it'll come around here in a minute. Yep, it's looking for another layer before it moves it off, so hopefully that's the last layer. Yep, there we go. Here is our shrink-wrapped pallets ready to be taken to the sell point. So, we might as well go and get a little forklift truck and go and flog them. Right, here we go. We only put a little bit in there, so it's stopped already. But we should be able to roll up here. Again, if my spatial awareness will allow me to grab this pallet without knocking it into the middle of next week, that would be cool. Roll onto it. Oh, there we go, that wasn't bad. I've done worse than that before. We'll roll onto here. And we can whip it up to the sell point just here. And if we watch in the top right hand corner, not all we need the money, 16 million in the bank there. But we can drop this off here. And there you go. 1,510 pounds per pallet. So imagine a truckload of those. That'd tot up, wouldn't it? Right, um, now, obviously, if you don't want to use the crane, and it is a little bit cumbersome. In fact, I'll just move it out of the way, actually. Uh, let's move it all the way down here, out of harm's way. Um, and I'll grab a telehandler, because you can... There we go, it's out of the way now. I've got a telehandler in here, actually. Um, you can just load it, or, or I'm guessing a little bobcat skid steer sort of thing as well would work. Let's put this bucket on. You can just load it that way as well. But here we go, this is probably slightly on the big side, actually. Like I said, you just roll up in here, take a bucket load. There's enough space in here to move this around relatively easily, especially with the doors open. As long as you've aligned it right, you just can dump this into the hopper, like so. I don't know why it's saying this action can't be performed here, because I've just performed it. I think it was tipping too quickly. Um, maybe, there we go. Yeah, I wasn't close enough into the hopper, so we were saying you can't tip it on the floor. But there we go. Job done there. And that is running again. Now I'm going to move this over here so that we can pop the pelletizer in. We'll get the pelletizer and the palletizer working together. But there we go. Looking good. Nice animations, eh? They've done a great job with this. They really have done a lovely job updating this for 22. It is fantastic. I think you lot are going to have a lot of fun with this. 
Right, I am folding up this just so we can pop it in the shed. And I think that will be the last thing I need to show you. I think I've covered every single permutation that this does now with this last little bit. Um, but, gotta say, quite loving this. Right, here we go. Just reversing this into place. Tip number one, make sure that the chute is open before you reverse it. There's not enough space to unfold it afterwards and it'll ping off the walls. So, there you go. You have been warned. Um, I am not doing great with this, but I have also got a tractor that's way bigger than it should be. So, you need to go quite far back as well. There you go. You're almost touching the back wall there with it. Right. So we're picking up our bale shredder. Now remember the way that the palletizer has been put into the shed. Having that yellow roller on the right hand side will help you as we're looking at it. So let's roll this into the shed. It is a bit tight this. I mean I've not helped by sticking the biggest fent tractor I could find in there. You could get something a lot smaller I'm sure. Remember the horsepower requirements. Uh, well, they are pretty big for this, aren't they? 300 odd, so um, you probably do need a relatively big tractor, but let's drop that there. Hopefully that's close enough. Let's drop it down and get out of here. Oh. Right, we're jumping in here, and as you can see, I think I'm too far away here. So we might just have to super strength this. It does have to be relatively close. There we go, let's just nudge it up like so, jump back in the tractor, yeah, there we go, I've caught it now, so, attach that, let's unfold it, there should be enough space for this to fit, he says, hopefully. Well, I saw it on Creative Mesh's page, and it fitted, so, I hope there is enough space, and it looks like there is, so there we go. Now, all we need... In fact, we'll power it up. All we need to drop a bale on here. So let's power it up and go and get that last bale. Right. Bale grabbed. I have not made the best machinery choices. I've got the biggest kit I could find. Um, which isn't always the best kit. You can sometimes use smaller stuff and get a better solution. But I think this will work. So let's give it a go. There we go. And we can just drop this on to here, like so. Now, I'm conscious this is straw, and what we've been doing up until now on here has been hay pellets, so I hope that doesn't mess things up, but there it is. It's on the conveyor belt. Let's get this out of the way, and we'll watch it do its thing. So there we go. Bale is loading in. Looks like the animation looks like it's not attached super accurately to the bale there, so um, obviously... It's not released yet, it's still in testing, so they'll maybe repair that before it is launched. But you can see we've got a fully automated system. Drop the baler in, it will turn them into pellets and it will tip them in and uh, bag them all up as well. So that is your third solution for how it could work. It's looking good, isn't it? It's looking really, really good. Fantastic. And there you go, actually. You've got a split pallet there of hay and straw together. Now, obviously, it's disappeared because it's been shrink-wrapped, but this goes to show you don't have to wait for one pallet of one to finish before you get your second one. Um, so, brilliant. Absolutely fantastic. Well, there you have it. That is Straw Harvest for FS22, and it is fantastic. It is so good to have it back. And I've got to say, it's, it's a step up from 19... Um, it just runs so, so smoothly and so well. Everything is built to the, just a really high standard and it, it just runs seamlessly, which is, I think, one of the best things uh, you want to hear when you're looking at quite complex mods like this. Um, really, really nicely done. So hats off, Creative Mesh. You've done it again, guys. Uh, a big thank you. I think I'm saying it on behalf of the community. When they get a hold of this, they're going to love it. Uh, this was super popular uh, in 17 and 19, so it is fantastic to see it back. Um, but hopefully that was a nice little insight into how it works, uh, as well as looking at all the different elements of it. Um, any questions, 
leave them in the comments. I'll see what I can do to answer them. Um, I'm going to be playing with this quite a lot, I think. Um, just forgotten how good it was. So, for me, for now, thank you very much for watching. Apologies for the slightly long video, but there is a lot in this, and I will break it up with chapters in the uh, in the video, so you can jump between bits if you want. But uh, thank you for watching. I hope it's helpful, and I'll see you again very soon. Take care. Bye for now.